Hello, grandmothers of the world. So we're gonna be learning how to make these Fentex or grandma style slippers. So if that's what you were expecting based on the title, um, that's what we're gonna be doing. So we're actually gonna be learning with the pair of this one. Um, so if this is your first project, a couple things before we get started is um, needle size. It's gonna depend on what size yarn you use and uh, it doesn't really matter what size yarn you use. As long as you're gonna want to use two yarns that are the same size, however, with this one, I accidentally bought two yarns that are different sizes, and it turned out okay. So it's kind of hard to mess up too badly. Um, the yarn always has a recommended needle size. I tend to go for smaller than that. Uh, just having that loose yarn, I find it helps because the thickers, the slippers are so thick um, that it helps to have that loose yarn. Uh, also, it doesn't matter what material your needles are made out of. I've used bamboo, plastic, and metal, and they all work just fine. I tend to go with the metal if it's just a normal one, or plastic if they're thicker needles, because if they're more flexible, then you're probably working with uh, thicker yarn. And also, this pattern it looks really nice when it's done, but it's really simple. You only have to knit stitch, so if you don't know how to do anything fancy, that's fine. You only have to knit. It's really easy. Um, my grandma used to make these slippers all the time. She ended up with arthritis, and then when she passed away, I inherited it, all of her leftover yarn, and that's kind of what she was remembered by, is making a pair of these slippers for everybody. And so I just learned, I figured out a lot of stuff by myself, and because I had to figure out so much by myself, I thought I'd just make a video for anybody else who has inherited tons of yarn from their grandma and would like to keep knitting slippers. So that's what this is. Okay, so of course the first thing to do is to cast on. So I have 13 blocks around here um, and four stitches on each one. So I'll um, cast on... 58 stitches. Um, my cast on method, I don't even know what it's called, but I'll demonstrate. Um, I just twist the yarn and then cast on, so I would do that. Uh, did I say 58? 52 stitches. Um, actually, that's not true. So I would make 51. And then my last stitch will be the one of the opposite color. Um, if you know a better way to cast on alternating colors, you could do that, I guess. But this is just the way that I figured out to do it best. So, um, yeah, after I cast on 52, including the blue one, I will say the next step. Also, just mention for any noobs that it doesn't matter how you cast on. Like, it's not like you need different cast ons for different projects. I was honestly a bit confused about that at first, but it doesn't matter. Just as long as you end up with 50, one of your solid color and one of your uh, little colored color. <laughs> so, what you're looking at now is the right side. So, you want um, the resting yarn to go in the back. So you're going to start with the blue yarn because that's how you'll get, like, the the blues are the sides. So you're going to start and end with, uh, for me it'll be, I'm going to start and end with blue. So you can just hold your other colors down. I always hate the first row of a project. I always think it's the worst because it's so hard to knit these dumb little stitches and make them all even tension. So, yeah. Just take your time with this. So you're going to do four and four, making sure that your resting thread is in the back. I also know that I knit differently than um, I see in most other videos. So if you have a better way that you already like knitting, don't worry about the way I'm knitting. I only ever do knit stitches in this slipper. So if you already knit another way, don't stress about the way that I'm knitting. It's a little bit different, I know. I just find it more efficient. Um, so I've done four blue stitches. So now I'm going to switch. Um, as long as you keep it consistent, it doesn't matter the way that you trade the yarns. What I always do is I imagine like if I'm laying the needles flat like that, and I've just lost my stitches, um, the, the resting thread 
or the thread that I am trying to get to be the resting thread is going to lay flat with this um, needle that's on the left hand side. So then I would just imagine if I'm holding it there but then I usually trade it with this hand. So as long as you're keeping it consistent it really doesn't matter. It'll be on the inside anyway um, and it's what's called the wrong side so it doesn't actually matter if it's all twisted or ugly or whatever so just do your thing. So just continue this row going four and four, trying to keep even tension, which is why I hate the first row. So good luck with that. Alright, so now my first row is done. It doesn't look amazing, but I don't care. Um, your project will be fine, even if it looks like trash like mine. Um, the yarn is twisted, but don't stress about this. It will untwist itself as you work. So now... Um, we're working on the wrong side, so you can already kind of see it, but I've made this mistake so many times where I start stitching as if, or I start, whatever it's called, knitting as if this were the right side, so I like alternate, I keep putting it to the back, but that's wrong. Um, it's also very important when you're first starting a row that you twist the yarns together. My first pair of slippers, I messed this up, I was not twisting them together, and then at the end you just end up with a flap. Of yarn because the rest of it is attached but if you haven't attached this one and this one you just have these weird flappy slippers and I did end up fixing them at the end so if you end up with weird flappy slippers figure out a way to fix it but you can also just prevent weird flappy slippers so literally just twist the bottom yarn around the top yarn and proceed as normal so then I'm gonna put the blue yarn at the back. The resting yarn is going to be in the front, so I'm holding it um, with my thumb just in the front here. And the blue yarn goes in the back, and then you're going to carry on in the same fashion, knitting four blue, four gray, or whatever colors you have. Yeah, do not stress about how the first couple rows look. It does get better in my experience. I guess if you really um, mess up, you'll have to take it apart, but the first rows of my work are usually bad. And the nice thing too about this project is that you end up sewing the first few, or not the first, yeah, you end up sewing like the first row together. So you don't actually see it in the end, which is great. So just continue um, knitting to the end of here. Um, yeah, continue knitting to the end of this row and then we'll move on. Before I send you on your way, I'll explain um, how I do this transition. So since this is the wrong side, it's a little bit different. Your resting yarn is going to be in the front here. And so once I've done knitting, I guess most people would hold it with this hand. So once you're done knitting, you're going to take it to the front. And again, imagine if your needles are like this, it's going to fall to this needle. So then you, I, I started by just holding it against this needle, but then I found that too complicated. So now I just hold it with this thumb. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you're knitting yarn for when you're looking at the wrong side is near you. It's kind of self-explanatory. It might be hard to see in the video, but it is pretty self-explanatory if you're looking at the side that's um, ugly, then you want the yarn to stay on that ugly side. If you're looking at the pretty side, you don't want to put the yarn on that pretty side. So, yeah, just continue with this row. Um, good luck. Alright, so this is where we're at now. You can more clearly tell by now that this is the wrong side that we're looking at, and this is the right side. So, I'd say from now on, you're probably good to go on knowing which side you're looking at, whether it's the right or wrong side. So, um, just keep putting the yarn on this ugly side here and then keeping this side pretty. So for all the slippers that I've done so far, uh, I've made it so that each square has four purl rows and then once I get to the fourth purl row, um, I know that it's time to switch colors. So if you want, you can do it differently. I just think that this looks really good. I like the long thin stripes but if you wanted to do like a checkerboard so make them square it's up to you it's your creative genius so I'm gonna show doing the same um, way that I first started but get creative if you want um, yeah one
for so for this video, once you see four um, purl stitches, then you'll know to switch, and I'll explain that. So I'm going to keep stitching until I have um, that those four purl stitches that I'm talking about, and then I'll show you how to switch colors. Alright, so I hope that you've had success in twisting your yarn and in knitting every row and in doing four and four, and if you haven't, um, that's okay, you're just learning, so be proud of yourself either way. I did just want to do a little bit about um, showing my way of knitting. All the videos that I've watched so far have shown like this way of knitting where you hold the yarn in your right hand and then you put the needle through and then you have to like transfer over and then wrap it around. I'm not even sure if I did that right, oh yeah. So I never knit like this because I just find it so inefficient. I think that I taught myself this method and then later I learned that it's actually, uh, I didn't make it up, it's called continental knitting. So there are other videos that are going to explain it a lot better than I can because I really just taught myself. But basically I just hold the yarn in my left hand um, and then go through and then just quickly in one motion pick up the yarn and go back through. I just find that works so much better for me, like it doesn't take nearly as much time and um, I don't have to keep switching the needles, so if that works better for you, you can use that, but if you're still comfortable with the, uh, the other way of knitting, just keep going, but in case you're looking for a more efficient way to knit, I think that this one is really good. I'm kind of in an awkward position right now, but normally I can knit um, pretty fast, although if you're confused about this, just keep going with how you're doing it. Um, I'm just going to finish this row and then we'll switch. Okay, cool, so now I have eight stitches of um, the blue here, for example, or the blues on the end. So now we're going to switch to grays on the end. Uh, it's really easy to do. It's honestly even easier than starting a normal row because you don't have to twist the yarn at all. Um, you just bring the gray up instead of the blue and then you just start knitting. So when you start a new color, it should be, um, you should be looking at the right side, so you should be getting a knit stitch on this one. And then just continue this. Um, I always find that when you knit the first one, the blue is really loose, so I always just like to pull the blue tight, not uh, super tight, because then you just get an awkward tight stitch, but um, tighten it a little bit so the stitches are even. and. Um, just keep going, so four gray, four blue, four gray, and then you're just going to do that for um, for another eight rows. Um, I don't want to re-explain everything because I hate when videos get so rambly, but I hope that you have gotten this so far. Um, if not, just rewind and check back. So here we have um, the first row. And now I'm just going to switch to the blue. I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before, holding the one in one hand. And stitch blue here for four, gray for four. Yeah, just same thing that you've already been doing. So just carry on that for eight more rows. And if you are all good to go on that alternating pattern, you can just go ahead and stitch as much um, of the slipper as you think will fit the person. So this is for a man with small feet. So um, I just basically fit it to my own foot and um, the, the yarn does stretch a bit when you wear it. It stretches out and takes a different, like a more normal foot shape. And so if you make it a little small, it will stretch. So that's why I just made it to my own foot size. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead and just stitch seven or however many I would stitch seven um, for this yarn and this tension and this needle size and whatever um, but it will depend like these ones all have different numbers of um, of rows or of blocks so just do what is going to fit and then the toe part is um, the next part so just go ahead and make as many uh, rows as you think will fit your foot. So by this point I have seven full blocks and two stitches. My uh, yarn supply is definitely dwindling so it's a good thing that it's time to finish this up. So um, yeah again I just want to emphasize that 
just because I have seven blocks and two stitches, this does not mean this is the correct size by any means. It's just the size that I'm going to use because this is what I think will fit this person. So to decrease, we're going to keep going. So for me, since I've only done two, I would technically have six more stitches to go, but since I'm ending it, I would just keep using the gray. But if you did finish a block and then you were going to start your decreases on the next block, you could switch colors. So just keep with the pattern. Um, I do personally really like the look of keeping the same color as you decrease. I think it's really cool. So if you already know how to do this, it's just knitting two together. And if you don't know how to do it, I'll just show you. So instead of knitting normally like one um, little, whatever that's called, loop, you just knit two. So you go two from the top, and then you just knit normally those two together. So as you're decreasing, you will have only two stitches per block. And we're going to do this for two rows. So by the end of it, you'll only have one stitch of each color per block. So instead of being four blues and then four grays, it's just going to be one blue, one gray. I'll try and show you a couple, or I will show you a couple. And then you can do that on your own. And it's so tight. Um, I do find that plastic needles are slightly helpful since this yarn is already pretty thin. It doesn't matter, but when I was working with one that was a lot thicker, it did make a difference. But it's whatever. You'll figure it out. Okay, um, so now I have two gray, two blue. So just keep going with that on the whole row, and then the next row you do the same type of decrease. Alright, so this is how you should end with just one um, stitch per block. And now you get to sew. So, um, oh yeah, um, you can cut the yarn about, I usually cut about, mm, this is probably like two feet. That's going to be more than enough. So just cut your yarn about two feet and then a yarn needle. I am going to strongly recommend this. If you actually plan on knitting, do yourself a favor and get a yarn needle. I tried to not get a yarn needle for so long because I'm frugal apparently. Um, just get yourself a yarn needle. It's going to save you so much work. I was using a crochet hook and then I used a bobby pin. Just get yourself a yarn needle. They're really cheap. I actually stole mine initially and then when I realized I stole it, I paid for it. But yeah, you can either get it for free if you steal it like me or you can pay five dollars like I did when I realized. So then you're just going to go back through all your stitches. Ooh, I changed angles because it's so hard to see. But go through your stitches with your needle. Make sure you're getting all the yarn, otherwise it's going to be weird. Um, also, it's like the same way that I just came out, so I went back in on the end that has all the long yarn. Okay, so now that I'm through all of them, I usually just take my knitting needle out so that it's easier to get all the stitches through. Um, and then I just sort of wiggle them all through. So this part that I'm pulling through right now is the toe. So you're going to want to make it um, nice and tight there, otherwise you're going to have one chilly toe. Um, so just pull it nice and tight and then I always do my first stitch nice and close to um, where the other side is, the other side of the circle, um, so that the toe is actually closed because I have made a couple pairs or started sewing where I end up just with this big hole. Also right now you should be looking at your wrong side. Um, so the right side, the nice side is on the inside and you're looking at your wrong side so that all the all the messy stitches will be on the outside. I also usually just use um, both colors, but you don't have to. It's whatever you feel like doing. So then you're just going to sew up and down. I usually do one um, one per like block, or one per knit stitch, I guess. You can see the division of like the purl and the knit stitches. So I usually just go one in each knit. And then just go until you think, yeah, I bet a foot would probably fit in there. So usually I leave, like I go a bit more than half, 
um, and maybe we'll leave three open. I actually forget how I did it. On the one that I already stitched, yeah, so I left, I stopped at the end of the three blocks, so there's three blocks that are open. I think he'll be able to put his foot in there. Um, so just keep sewing. I won't make you watch me do it because it's um, pretty boring, but it doesn't really matter how you sew it. Just as long as it's nice and sturdy, that's kind of the reason why I use two yarns. Not because I really think it makes any difference. It doesn't make any difference aesthetically or anything. It's just kind of structural. Um, so you're going to stitch until you have three blocks-ish or whatever. If it's a really small foot, don't leave three blocks. If it's a really massive foot, go see a doctor. So yeah, just keep going with that. Okay, so also please do not steal crafting supplies just because I said so. It is not a good idea, and I did go back and pay for it. Um, like with actual money, not I paid for it. But anyway, um, so I finished sewing this. Also something that I forgot to mention is you're going to want to make sure that your blocks are aligned. So if you're sewing into a gray block, make sure that you're also your needle is coming out of a gray block. Um, on the bottom one, or the this is the back of the heel. The heel is the back. Anyway, I usually just do like a nice secure double knot in the bottom and then I stitch my way up. I also usually tie these tails together. Um, this is how I usually end. So if you already have a good way of ending your stitch, that's cool. But I always just do my final stitch and then I go back through the same stitch. And then that circle, I'll pull my needle through. And then I have a nice secure knot. And then I also will sometimes... Um, do a couple more stitches just to make sure the yarn is nice and secure in there. And then you can trim all the tails, um, flip your slipper inside out, and it's done. It's ready to wear. <laughs> it will become more normal shaped as you wear it. Don't stress. Alright, so if you needed any more clarification on anything, if I did a terrible job of explaining anything, just ask for clarifications. Um, don't leave a like because I don't need to feed my ego. And yeah, I hope you guys <laughs> learned something. Happy knitting!